Create exclusivity. Create exclusivity. Create exclusivity. Let's say you do sign volleyballs. We'll go volleyball, okay? You don't want to have a thousand volleyballs out there. What if we just did a limited run? And what if we signed a hundred volleyballs? And then on the volleyball, it said one of a hundred. A hundred of a hundred. Ninety-eight of a hundred. What's going on, family? It's Jonathan Jones, and we're here with another episode of Beyond the Ball. And with Beyond the Ball, what the focus is to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree, right? So helping them successfully navigate a life ahead even while they're in the process of going through their sport or competing at the university. And today, I want to talk just for a second about the Johnny Manziel documentary, the Johnny football documentary. I'm not sure if you've seen it yet or if you want to see it but haven't, but I'm going to let you know right now, in this episode, we're going to do a few spoilers. There's going to be just a few spoilers. So if you haven't seen the untold story of Johnny football on Netflix, I would suggest you go ahead and just go see it. Pause this episode and then go watch it. But there are a few takeaways that I want to share. And I wanted to just talk about how student athletes today can leverage what Johnny football couldn't uh, a few years ago, probably like five to seven years ago. Right. So the, the, the first thing I want to talk about is during my time as a student athlete, I learned and realized that this is a great benefit to me being on campus getting some notoriety just based on us winning a game or getting notoriety based on just being on the basketball team because I went to a smaller institution. However, with Johnny football, with him being at Texas A&M, wow, okay, being at Texas A&M, one of the things that I think he did really, really, really well was garnering attention, right? he was able to get the fans in the stands, point blank, period. However, getting the fans in the stands never translated to dollars received for him. I'm going to say it one more time. Getting the fans in the stands never translated to dollars for him. But now, you being a student athlete and with NIL, the first thing that I'm going to encourage you to do, identify what you're driving to or for the university. Johnny Manziel, he was driving jersey sales. He was driving ticket sales. He was even driving donors coming and pouring money into the institution. And they they raised more money than they have in previous years because everybody wanted to be a part. It was exciting, right? So for you, wherever you are, whatever institution it is, Begin to take note, like, what's going on? Are people wanting to buy my jersey? If so, then maybe we need to see about an opportunity to where we can put in place to where we're uh, we're, we're printing our own merch or we partner up with a merch company who's printing off jerseys, printing off T-shirts, right? Because we don't want to leave money on the table because you're in a a area, you're, you're, you're in a time to where it's finite. There's only going to be so many years you can be a student athlete in college, okay? So the first thing is we want to identify what we're driving towards for the school, right? Is it, is, it, is, it, is it apparel sales? Is it jersey sales? Whatever it is, we want to identify what that is and then begin to leverage it. The second thing is Johnny Manziel had a friend in place to help him. Starting out, he had a friend in place who was setting up certain events, right? If it be where he went and he signed footballs or he would go somewhere and sign other autographs or whatever it might be for you, okay? For you, student athlete, I want you to begin to think about this. What is the plan to where you can take advantage at scale of opportunities. He had a friend in place, but then eventually he had to replace the friend with an agent. This was after he got out of school. This was when he was going to the pros. 
But for you now, the time clock has sped up. And now the opportunity that you don't have to wait to get to the pros to monetize, you can do it right now in college. Who is the staff on campus? Who is the agent that you're going to vet, right? You're going to make sure you vet them. Or who is the parent who is going to take on this part of the lifting, right? The, the person facilitating deals, the person having conversations, the person negotiating on your behalf. This allows you to still be the face of the brand. And if you're the face of the brand, you want to keep your hands clean of having to break down numbers and, and having to have those tough conversations. That's not your role. You want somebody else to take that on, but we want to make sure that they're vetted and we want to make sure that they're a trustworthy individual. Because if not, what we're going to do is we're going to get bogged down with trying to do NIL deals over here. Then on the other side, we're, we're trying to still compete at the highest level as an athlete. And then we still have to perform in the classroom. And if we're in relationships or we have a social life, whatever that might be, it's, it's too much. It's too much to try to juggle at one time. You may be able to do it. And if you can, more power to you. But the majority of people will not be able to juggle all of those things and do all of that at the same time. OK, so we want to begin to figure out who can we put in position so that we can be hands off and then they can tell us where we need to go. They can tell us what time we're supposed to be here. OK, we got an event. Cool. I just show up. I sign some footballs, sign some volleyballs, sign some softballs, whatever it might be. And then I go back to dorm or I get ready for practice or I get ready for the game. When if you have somebody in place like that, now what we're doing is. We're freeing our mind up so we can just do what we do best. We can go out and ball and then kill it in the classroom, right? This is something that you want to consider. And I have my notes here because watching Johnny uh, football, then I began to see that he was partnering up with elite level individuals. Like you saw him with pictures with LeBron or you saw him over here doing these signings, I believe, with A-Rod. And then... He's with Drake and he's these different places and he leveraged it for the moment. He didn't leverage it to create a movement. I'm going to say it one more time. He leveraged those relationships for the moment, short term. He didn't leverage it to create a movement. John, what are you saying? What does that even mean? Okay. It's one thing to show up at Drake's party and then you get posted on Instagram or you get posted on social media. It's another thing to where you create a relationship to where now you can have Drake show up at one of your events or something like that if he if he's free, right? You can coordinate something like that to where it's a football signing and then what if we sold tickets to the signing? And then Drake did a concert. Would you rather be in the club popping bottles with Drake, which seems cool, right? It seems cool. That's a short term play and go viral for the night. Or would you rather partner up? Hey, Drake, I love you did a concert over here during this football signing, during the during training camp, during like whatever, like whatever. You make it an event. And now what you've done, now it's easier to sell tickets because you got Drake showing up. And you can give Drake a cut of the money. Y'all can go 50-50, whatever. But it's just something else to consider. If I was Johnny Football, that's what I would have done, right? But, of course, he didn't have NIL, that benefit. Uh, the, 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 the third point or the fourth point I want to share is create exclusivity. Create exclusivity. Create exclusivity. Let's say you do sign volleyballs. We'll go volleyball, okay? You don't want to have a thousand volleyballs out there. What if we just did a limited run? And what if we signed a hundred volleyballs? And then on the volleyball, it said one of a hundred, a hundred of a hundred, 98 of a hundred. So now, You've created a limited edition type product. 
it creates exclusivity. Why is this important? If you think of Beanie Babies, Beanie Babies used to create a certain amount of individual Beanie Babies. You couldn't just get them whenever you wanted to. They released a certain time. Even when they had Beanie Babies at McDonald's, what they did was they only allowed you to have so many. And then when they were out, they were out. Because when we create things that are in a small quantity or they're limited edition, this increases the value. Because now the demand will be so much greater because the supply is small. That's where the term comes from, supply and demand. So you create a certain amount. You see a demand has been increased. And now you say, hmm, are we going to create more? Or are we just going to resell the ones that we already have? This is something that we must consider. Creating exclusivity because you can't be everywhere all at one time and you're going to drain yourself out trying to do all of these events, trying to uh, do all these signings, trying to do all these whatever for a small fee when you can do one, two, like a couple of events, a handful. What if you did one, a, what if you did one a, a, a semester? So you did one fall and then one spring. Now you're going to give a reason to build up to your event to where if people missed out on the fall one, they're going to definitely want to catch you at the spring one. These are things that we must consider. And then the last thing I wanted to just share is negotiate what you want. Negotiate what you want. And you must be realistic with yourself. Okay. John, why are you saying that? So, Johnny Football, in the docu-series, documentary, he began to write down a plan. These are the things that I want to do. This is how much money I want to make. And when he got, he got clear on that, just like in, in, in the Bible, it says, write the vision and make it plain. Write the vision and make it plain. So those who hear it can take off with that thing, can get an understanding of that thing. The people you bring around you can get clear on where you're trying to go. So now they can identify their role in helping you get there. And making sure that we're clear on what we want. When you come to the table, now you can negotiate based on what you want. And then you also have to know what is your leverage? What is your reach on social media? How many followers do you have on Instagram? How much engagement do you get on Instagram? What demographic is following you most? Is it men between 18 and 25? Is it women between 18 and 36? When we begin to know this information, when we begin to know this, these stats, when we began to know this data, now we're able to show people that we're running a business and we're not playing games. So I want you as the student athlete, I want you to negotiate, right? Or send somebody to negotiate on your behalf, but you need to be able to tell them where this information is. On Instagram, you can pull it up. If you don't have a uh, professional profile, you can go on the backside and set up a business or prof business profile is what it's called. But when you set that up on the back end, you begin to get access to more data, more analytics, more information. And if you have that, now when you come to the table, you can say, hey, blank company, I know that you typically market to college students ages 18 through 23. On my Instagram, the majority of my followers that engage with my content are in between ages 18 to 23. I would love to see how we can partner and I would love to see how we can work out some sort of deal so that I can get you more exposure to the audience that you want to get in front of and let them know that, yeah, 
I don't know what your previous marketing has been in the past. I would love for us to talk through what you've tried before. What does your marketing budget look like? That, that I mean, that's if you're bold. You can start asking questions like that if you're bold. But when you begin to have that conversation, people begin to see you not as a student athlete, but as a business person. And if you begin to be viewed as a business person and you're coming to the table understanding business, understanding numbers, understanding what your value actually is to the marketplace, then you'll be able to command what you want. And you don't have to just accept what they're going to give you. No, no, no. I want you to uh, pay me this up front in sponsorship. And then we can also do an affiliate deal to where I'm going to, you know, endorse your product and tell people to type in promo code J-O-N-E-S. And then all the people that sign up on my promo code, then I'll get an additional cut. But we need to understand the business side of things. So shout out to Johnny Football for taking uh, taking us through his journey. Shout out to Netflix. They did a great job on that, on that untold story. Um, but I would love to see more student athletes be successful, leveraging their NIL, understanding the value of their NIL and being able to have business conversations with business people because you're running a business. At this point in time, if you don't have a product just yet, you are your product. And that's worth something. So don't devalue it. Family, if you enjoyed this episode, I would encourage you just to go ahead and smash the like button on YouTube if that's where you're watching and drop a comment down in the comment section. Let me know what you would like us to unpack and further discuss in terms of uh, beyond the ball. So breaking down things that help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. We have some amazing interviews coming up, but I want to get real clear with you and learn more about what you, what you uh, want to learn about. Where are you struggling right now as a student athlete? Comment just down below or send us a direct message on Instagram to Beyond the Ball Podcast. And we check those messages and we'll be sure to shout you out uh, for giving us the opportunity to unpack whatever topic you might have. But family, uh, to, in order to help us keep this message going out to more and more people, we also would just uh, encourage you to, to follow the podcast on Spotify or Apple, wherever you uh, listen to your podcast, and then write us a helpful review. Because that way we can get to more people, we can share this message, and ultimately really help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. So family, I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Ball. Until next time, peace and God bless.